Welcome back everybody to Project 2 and the Yamaha 998 turbo powered Rans S21 build. I'm sure you've all seen that sneak peek teaser out there for this gearbox but today is the day. We get to test fit this thing up on the engine and make sure that everything is fitting up as I planned. A big thanks goes out to Teal at Skytrax for sending out this empty case to me. As I understand it, he's almost ready to send out production units once the last remaining parts show up that go inside. The goal here is simple. Not only am I test fitting and ensuring that everything I've done up to this point places that prop hub right where I want it, but also to give Skytrax a dry run on a regular guy out there interpreting the instructions and installing a box in the field. I won't be final installing anything today, so you won't see any sealant, thread locker, or torque wrenches, but you can bet once the real box gets here, I'll be doing a full, more detailed install video. Let's take a look at the parts that we do have at this time. This is the rear or the back half of the case that will mount up against the front of the engine. There's no denying the high level of engineering and exquisite manufacturing execution with these parts. Parts are lightened where able and strengthened in others, and you can see the cooling fin area in the middle there. We'll talk more about that in a bit, but I think that's one of the coolest features of the three-cylinder Skytrax boxes. The front half here is obviously missing the gearing inside, like I mentioned before, but he did throw in the prop hub shaft. Again, you can see just how awesome this thing is. It's not often that you run across a piece that not only works well, but looks just as good. Note the integrated oil level viewing windows on the front side, along with the drain port down towards the bottom. It kind of makes you just want to run without a cowling, so it can be seen all the time. Or maybe I'll just do a clear cowling. And here's the water pump cover. This gets sandwiched between the rear case half and the engine. One side of it mimics the OEM cover, and one side has the integrated cooling chamber for the gearbox. It interfaces with those cooling fins that I mentioned earlier. It encases them in the water straight from the cold side of the radiator prior to it entering the engine. This is such a cool idea and I think it'll go a long way in stabilizing the temps of the gearbox oil. Here's a look at the hardware that comes along with each box. Again, note that I don't have the main gear set. Several different links and styles of fasteners along with all the seals and hose that you'll need to get a leak-free install is included. It's fairly self-explanatory, but I'll point out where all these different bolts go as the parts go on. This is what the front of the engine looks like in stock form, and the first step is to remove the four bolts surrounding that output shaft and pull that assembly out of the case. In the full install, we'll be using some of this as the interface between the gearbox and the engine. However, for my purposes today, I'll just be setting this aside for now. I didn't have a slide hammer that would attach to the output shaft, as the instructions mention, but I did have a half by 20 threaded bolt and some other junk laying around, so I devised a lever system to pull this unit out. It's not really that stuck inside the case, and you're mainly just fighting a lip seal around the bore, but you could probably just grab the bolt and pull it out by hand. Having never done this before, I was trying to be cautious and just not damage anything or drop this chunk on the floor. And, and there's a quick look inside the hole that we just exposed. Note that there is a master spline on the crank, that could cause some strife later on, so I'm sure we should remember that that's there. The water pump cover comes off next. It's got a combination of socket head and Phillips head screws, along with one hose on the top side. Some of you guys will probably more than likely just choose to eliminate that small hose and cap it off. It takes the coolant up through the throttle bodies and puts it right in the exit port headed back to the radiator. I'll be leaving mine in place, and the gearbox does have provisions for either. You'll see that here in a bit. Here's a quick comparison of that stock pump cover and the gearbox version. I like to use a bit of PET or petroleum jelly on the O-rings just to help hold them in place as well as promote good sealing once things get installed. I ran two of the long countersunk fasteners through the rear of the case half. These will help hold that pump housing in alignment as I position things up on the engine. Normally you'd be using some thread locker as well as a bit of Permatex around the output bore of the engine and the heads of these countersunk fasteners, but since this is just a test fit, I'm not going to do that this time around. Just like anything else with lots of bolts, you want to get all the bolts started before tightening anything up or you'll just be fighting every fastener. I started with the longer hardware and moved my way towards the shorter ones. You can find out where they go just by inserting it in the hole and seeing which hole allows the head of the bolt to go down to about a half inch from the surface. It's a safe bet at that point that you have it in the right place. Now I forgot to include this in the hardware shot earlier, but they did throw in this bracket that goes back to the head off the top of the gearbox. 
I believe he recommends using this on the turbo versions since they'll be pulling a bit more with the extra horsepower. I had already utilized that hole on my head to support the throttle linkage setup, so I had to trim a bit off the spacer and slip it in there and it all worked out fine. And these are the parts up next. And we'll start by installing that set screw, but only put it in just a little ways for now. Then we'll drop in that o-ring down in the bore, followed by the part that looks like a mini aluminum funnel. Later we'll apply pressure sandwiching that o-ring and tighten that set screw holding it all in place. Then I'll remove the oil cap and salvage that o-ring for the vent adapter that replaces it. I was a bit worried here that I'd need to remove my throttle plate just to get this in place, but I left just enough relief that it worked out okay. I put the cap on the gearbox and cut a section of hose that would give me just a small curve back to the head, but there's plenty of hose included to run it any direction that you'd like. Then you can see me apply that downward pressure I was talking about and running the set screw, setting it all where I want it. Just like the back plate, there's a few longer fasteners for the front half of the case. I'm pointing those out here, and also note that I'm not installing the o-ring between these two halves, as I just don't need it right now for what I'm doing. I just align the two dowel pins at the top and the bottom of the case and tap things back to seat it. You'll see the prop shaft slide back a little bit on this one, but that's only because the internals are not all there, and it has some play that normally wouldn't be there. I simply snugged everything up and just had to stand back and admire it for a bit. I know most of you folks out there looking into Yamaha conversion engines are doing so out of budget restrictions. That just simply puts the standard aviation engines out of the picture. For that reason, I do understand and felt the same sticker shock when I looked into Skytrax initially for my setup. But what I quickly realized is that it's pretty much what will make or break a good, reliable functioning installation. Sure, I could have cobbled up some things for much less and maybe make it work, but I personally didn't want to reinvent the wheel since there was just such a great option out there already in work. I was happy to pay full retail price for my box, and to be honest, I'd have paid more. I just feel like that value is there, and you just can't get it anywhere else. I look forward to having the real one mounted up so I can get this thing started, but that'll happen soon enough. I'd love to know what you all think, so make sure you let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.